Reverend Darlene Franklin, uh, spiritually speaking at UrbanNationRadio.com. We invite you to call in and talk to us. We have an exciting show this evening. Um, we would, we would uh, uh, ask that you would uh, call in with your questions and um, share with our guests at 313-867-1305 or 313-867-1306. This evening I'm glad to have with me in the studio. We'll be talking about um, the, the transgender shootings in the city of Detroit that has um, happened recently. And today I have with me police officer Danny Woods of the Detroit Police Department. She is the LGBTQ liaison. Um, and so we're going to talk about uh, what's going on, a little bit about those cases and what the police department is doing about that as well as her community work and being a liaison with the community, as well as the Detroit Police Department. We also have Bree Campbell, community activist um, for the rights for transgender women in Detroit. And so I'm excited to hear her give us some insight and education and your thoughts on uh, what we can do to understand our transgender community better and um, just, as they say, let us have it today. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the infamous Don Trimble, yes. the missionary community activist. Um, he's worked for a number of nonprofit organizations in Detroit. And John is also a published poet, along with myself. And I'm yes. an anthology All right. title, Come on, Ask, Don't Tell. tell. Yes. <laughs> so I'm glad to have you guys here, and let's get right to it. I know y'all are chopping to get at it. You know, we had to, um, due to the weather, I'm glad y'all came back and want to uh, uh, do the show with you today. But um, let's, 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 get, let's get to it. Let's get to it. All and right. uh, relax, take a deep breath, and uh, just <laughs> right, go. be free. Long. Before we get on, on the topic, uh, uh, Officer Dan. Talk yes. to us about what is the uh, uh, LGBTQ liaison position about? Um, I am basically the bridge. I am from the department to the community and from the community to the department. Um, I'm pretty much in place to handle any one of the LGBTQ community that has been victimized, you know, to let them know it's not okay to be a victim. You know, if you see something, say something, you have someone you can go to. So that's my position, uh, making sure that everyone is treated fairly and any and every investigation is done to the fullest extent. How did that come about? How did that, all of that come about? How did, how did you get involved? Uh, well, <laughs> Um, of course, I'm from the community, you know, um, married to my wife of eight years. And just seeing the treatment or lack thereof, you know, the response uh, to the community, you know, something had to be done. And Chief Craig, you know, has done um, different things in other departments that he's worked with. And the response for a liaison from the community and to the department was always uh, positive. And so his question was, where's the one for Detroit? And so I was originally asked by Chief Gobby and uh, some things got put on the back burner, but uh, when Chief Craig came in, he picked up where we left off and, you know, got me going. Um, I originally work for the Horizons Project, which is a project of Wayne State University School of Medicine. I do HIV testing and counseling for youth between the ages of 13 and 24. And I also work for the sex lab um, that is doing a study on access to medical care for transgender communities or people who um, are on a different spectrum of gender identity. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Trimble. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what can I say? I don't know what it's I can say. Anyway. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Well, I, I, 
I'm the jack of all trades in, in, in the group. Um, I'm always on the, on the, I try to be at least always in the numbers, right? Because if not me, then who? If not us, then who? Right? And so I try to stay abreast on what's happening. I try to stay abreast on how to connect the people to what's happening and what they need. I try to be a voice of reason sometimes to the people <laughs> about being connected to the stuff that they need, right? And so um, uh, I think my role in the community has always been to be a connector, mm -hmm. yes. to be somebody who, who who is the, you know, you, you have the numerator and denominator, and the line between the numerator and the denominator, I think I'm that. And so uh, that's John Trimble. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I, honestly, um, I think I, along with everybody else, when I heard about these shootings, and um, this platform for me is to um, also be a bridge. Um, I feel like that I can be a bridge in the community to connect um, our, the gay community, LGBTQ community, with the mainstream African American community, mm -hmm. that we have nothing to be afraid of yes. um, uh, from each other, and I think that, um, that we can come together on the what we have in common, you know, mm -hmm. and first of all, that is what we visibly see, that we are all black, you yep. know, and so, um, and, and my my worldview and my position in the community just happens to be that of the church and spirituality or whatever, but um, uh, spiritually speaking is about the spirit of whatever we have going on in the community, and so Amen. I say that to say, um, like a lot of people, when we when when I heard this, we were like, "Oh, that's oh. a joke." Oh. That's an article. <laughs> <laughs> John, yeah. we need to talk about that. We need to talk about that. Yeah. Um, um, and actually, it was John, uh, Reverend. But he always put my name uh, along with him. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I feel compelled. You know, mm -hmm. I got six stacks of hope or whatever. John Trimble has put my name. So, mm -hmm. so but again. Um, and so I went in, in search of the articles, and, um, and, and as recently as today, um, I looked at some of the things, and I, I, what John said to me from his uh, uh, point of view was he was upset about the reporting mm -hmm. of what, had, what, what, had happened, what happened. And so um, that's the, the vein that I went looking at this issue. Mm -hmm. um, and then I began to to put the community together, um, who can come in, you know, I've I had about 10 people sitting in there, but who can really come in and shed some light. And, and what I've discovered really is, um, and I know we were talking about some of this uh, just before John came, and I'll let you talk about uh, what we were talking about, but just the articles that I've seen from the three different sources that I have, um, which is the uh, Detroit News and the um, ABC articles that was on the uh, uh, on, on television, also between the lines there. Right. Um, and I'm not um, disparaging anybody, but there's been some new light shed on that. Yeah. And so um, one of the things that what I would like to start out um, first is um, what would Brie, Tell us about the transgender community. Give us some, uh, um, especially locally here in the city of Detroit. What do you think is, is going on? Tell us. Um, the tran uh, I'm transgender. I think that what people don't understand is that even though that um, we are transgender, they think that it's really a choice. And I don't think people understand how much trans men and women give up when they transition. Um, there's a lot of things uh, that are put in place that uh, make it really hard for people to transition, to gain uh, correct IDs, to access medical care. Um, and the thing that I struggle with the most is that there has not been a conversation really about the impact that the transgender community has on general society and the impact that general society has on a transgender community. It's really sad that, uh, and I can I can say this, um, being a trans woman, I, I, I'm privileged and I'm very blessed to say that. 
And to see some of my brothers and sisters have to struggle a lot harder than I have to really bothers me. And it really bothers me that the things that are put in place that really hinder us from really living our lives, not just on a physical plane, but on a spiritual plane, it, it, it's disheartening. Uh, I'm glad that you wanted to have this conversation. One, because we have to understand that trans bodies are valuable. And when you look across the country and see all of these uh, all of these different cases of trans women being murdered and how easily that um, their gender is um, now a joke and how it's somehow they're somehow justified the men who murder these women are somehow justified because of the lifestyles that women choose to live and people and I use that word choice very loosely um, I feel like that trans women a lot of times have to resort to sex work and people don't want to have the conversation of the systems that put people in and put people at risk for becoming sex workers and so they're just pushed to the side victimized um, their names and their lives and their identities are stripped from them and it's it's a joke men in, men in dresses men who look like women um, he and, and people, I've read an article once where someone, in the beginning of the article, a trans woman was found murdered, and she and she, and then halfway down the article, the, the rest of it was he, and how easily it is for our lives to be stripped of us, especially when we are victims of some of the worst hate crimes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. At this time, um, let that sink in about what we'll take a break from the right to Spiritually Speaking with Reverend Darlene Franklin. I am your host and in studio today is Officer Dan Woods, Steve Campbell, and John Trimper. Um, and so as at the, at the break you were talking about um, how the impact of, of transgenders on society and society's impact on transgenders. Um, can you just define in, in a brief transgenders? Of course. Um, so it may look different um, uh, depending on the person and depending on how they identify, but um, trans is an umbrella term for people who fit under um, the spectrum that don't really identify with the gender um, identity or expression that they were born. So for instance, my name is Bree Campbell, I was born male, and I'm now a trans woman. You can Google me if you don't know who I am. Um, <laughs> Tell them, Bri. And, um, and um, so my gender pronouns now are no longer a male pronouns. They are female pronouns. So I would like to be prefer, I would prefer to be called she, her. And um, people need to understand that that is the level of respect that you have to meet people with. And just because you may not understand, maybe just because someone's look may not uh, fit your idea of what gender looks like does not mean that that gives you the right to assume for them. So, for instance, um, there are a lot of people who, to me, I um, don't understand their gender identity. So I always ask, like, what gender preferred pronouns would you like? And then that person will be able to explain them to you. Um, but transgender just basically means that you were born one sex and you don't identify with that sex. and how that spectrum looks looks different. Some people like to um, just do it in expression. They might change their hair and their clothes. And then some people may um, take hormones or testosterone to alter their bodies. And then some people prefer to have surgeries. Thank you. Thank You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Great. Let's get into the media. Yes. The media. Okay. Um, like I said, I looked at um, a couple of articles. Um, I'm not saying what, what I would say. <laughs> so, I looked at a couple of articles, and um, on the uh, WXYZ, you know, I really don't know what's Channel 7 anymore, ABC, cable, whatever, so I'm just going to uh, talk about what I, what I saw. Um, and on WXYZ, I saw what showed on the news, and then I saw um, Detroit police investigate hate crimes targeting transgender men. And then when I went to read the article, it was all three targets were transgender women. Talk to me about that, John Tremble, the media, the media. 
the, the, the media is, by and large, for, in, in, in my purview, responsible for a lot of the attitudes towards transgender men and women, right? For people living a trans experience, because more often not, reporters don't get it right. Mm -hmm. I literally had a conversation with Tom Greenwood of um, the Detroit News when his article came out. His article was the first one to come out. I picked up the phone and called the brother and said, listen, uh, do you know you're misgendering transgender people? Do you understand that the pronouns that you're using are wrong and are offensive to the transgender community? And he said to me, and I quote, that this was the information that we were given by the Detroit Police Department. I said, well, did you bother to call any LGBT organizations and ask them their opinion? He said, no, what would we do that for? He said, my issue with your community is you always think that it's an issue. I got a family member that's in the community. I said, well, you need to be more responsible if you got a family member in the community because your family member could be upset because you misgender his, his people. Mm -hmm. whole point I'm making is that every news report that came out about this particular story. In some way, shape, form, form, or fashion, the people in the story were misgendered. Now let's talk about some facts for a second. Not all three people in this in this case are transgender. Correct. Because of the proximity of the two transgender women that were shot mm -hmm. and the one person that was killed it being in Palmer Park led the media to believe that all three of these people were transgender. Yes, yes, well, I was going to say that, but thank you. <laughs> Go, you on the ball, child. Go for it. That's true. So, so, so okay, well, let's look at that and let's break that down to its smallest molecule. If just because someone gets killed in Palmer Park, let's start there. Mm -hmm. You automatically have to presume they are either L, G, B, or T. That presumption could be right and it could be wrong. Okay? By and large, the general presumption is if you're in Palmer Park, you're in Palmer Park for a specific type of reason. That is what that is. Ain't nothing the community can do about that's that because that's, that's the assumption, right? right? I could just be jogging and get my life early in the morning because I need a little jog around the, around the park. Or I could be playing tennis or whatever the situation is. So when we look at the way in which the media characterizes LGBT folks in general, let's, let's just lump us all together. Every time there's a news report about LGBT folk in the media, the folks begin to... The folks begin to give us misinformation, Mm -hmm. They misgender the trans, the people living trans experience. Mm -hmm. They all, there's always a level of disrespect and tonal kind of assault, right? There's there's this kind of language violence to coin a phrase mm -hmm. around LGBT stuff. Let Hugh Perkins be telling the story. I'm calling people by name. I'm calling them out. Yeah. Hugh Perkins is not like LGBT people because his, the vitriol in his when he reported this story. On uh, Fox News, is that, ain't that who he worked for Fox News? Yes, sir. Who, who, who mm -hmm. He, he, the way he talked about the people in this story, they were dehuman. They weren't even real people. And so we have to begin to call the media on the carpet. I bet you Tom Green will get his facts right next time we talk about. LGBT I'm folks. sure. Okay. And let me let me jump in right here now. As the liaison, is all it is also my responsibility to make sure if and when something is put out from the department involving the LGBT community, that it is correct. Absolutely. Now, what I tell the officers and what the officers tell the reporters, now we all know, and I'm no media bash, I mean, I'm just, I'm here. But sometimes the media can be like a 16-year-old girl with hot gossip. You know, it don't matter what it is. If it's hot, I'm telling it, whether it's right or wrong. So we put out the correct information because I know it's going to come back on me. My phone, my e everything will go crazy. <laughs> and so they, and they come to my desk. I'm right there. They come, okay, I don't want to offend. And they're, they're very uh, sensitive about it, you know. I don't want to offend. I want to make sure we get it right. Is it okay to say? Is it okay to uh, refer to? And I'm like, no, let me stop you right there. What you want to say is, and I even printed out a glossary. Like, no, seriously, just so people can familiarize themselves, you know, because you learn everything else. You might as well learn this too. You know, the days are changing. So, you know, that's my responsibility now. When somebody else gets a hold of it, like you said, they don't care. They just want to tell the story. They want to be the first one with it. You know, so we don't have control over what they say, but we make sure we're tight on our end. You know, we make sure we're correct 
on our end. So it, 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 because I think that the, the um, WXYZ Jim Kurtz, um, it was the uh, transgender women, uh, transgender men, <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's just irresponsible. So what I'm hearing you say is that if it comes to your desk, what it goes out is correct, but the media, whatever's going to say. Yeah, I mean, you know, we don't have... They don't, they don't care about... It's, it's just do. like in kindergarten when you play telephone. I can tell you something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not going to tell him exactly what I said. Exactly. You're going to put your own spin on it, and then you're going to add to it, and then by the time the story gets back to me, it's the total opposite of what I said. And even if we use Tom Greenwood's story as, as, the, as the guy, the headline says, Detroit police investigating whether three shootings of gay, comma, transgender men yeah. are related. Mm -hmm. So you sensationalized the story before, before I even got to read the yeah. details. Yeah. The, I'm already in transgender men. Oh, my God. Right? Mm -hmm. And so what, what we as a community have to do is we have to call these people on the carpet for misgendering us, mm -hmm. right? And for sensationalizing some details, these babies could have been killed. Yeah. Let's be clear. Somebody was killed. And and and, and while you while you're saying that this person is is or isn't transgender, you have now told somebody's narrative wrong. Well, an example is in his story, he says Detroit police investigating whether three shootings of gay transgender men are related. And in the body of his story, he says the uh, police said they haven't determined if the victim was gay or transgender, but this area has long been associated mm -hmm. with the gay community. Mm -hmm. His story is, um, he also says that two gay or transgender men, very negative, yep. very yep. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 misinforming or, 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 or not. It always makes it sound dirty. It makes it sound yeah. dirty. Um, whatever they yeah. are. Yeah. 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 Just, you know, this is what is happening. trans so. body is murdered on Six Mile Woodward. It, 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 that's expected because that's where that's where all the gays hang out. And what people fail to realize is, gay and lesbian and bisexual. They talk that talks about sexuality. Transgender is about identity. It has nothing to do with who you have sex with. And they over sexualize our community. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So now we. I'm, I'm gonna take a break right here because I wanna. I wanna get my thoughts together because I got something going on up here. Okay. So we'll be right back with you in one minute. Welcome back to Spiritually Speaking. I'm your host, Reverend Darlene Franklin. Um, do call in and uh, share with us your thoughts and or ask questions of our guests at 313-867-1305 or 313-867-1306. John Trimble humanized this for me. Okay. Um, um, I'm, I'm concerned that um, people may not get that this is a human issue, okay. especially in the African American community. These are brothers and these are sisters. These are sisters, you know, and, and human life is valuable and important. So I want you to speak on that. Uh, so, so to humanize it, I'll speak these names Aisha Love. CeCe McDonald, Candy Hall, Zorada Hayes, Yasmin Shanice, Tiffany Edwards, Mia Henderson, an unnamed woman in Michigan, Alejandro Leos, 15-year-old transgender girl in Washington, D.C., Bree Wallace, Deani Jones, Isline Nettles, Tyra Hunter, Stephanie Thomas, Yukia Davis. Those are just some of the names of transgender women that were either violently attacked and or killed. Right? Shelly Hillier. That's the worst one in the city of Detroit. And when you look at it from this perspective, the National Coalition Against Anti-Violence Program says that 72% of the victims of anti-LGBTQ homicide are transgender women. And 89% of those 72% are women of color. You need any more humanization than that? This is real. We are in a state of emergency for transgender women because of their... Uh, life, them living in a trans experience, and them even being bold enough to transition. That's an affront to what people think nature is supposed to be about. I mean, I mean we can get into a whole number, different, a whole number of different kind of conversations around that. But when you kind of look at the the you know trans panic excuse, 
That's what these people are using to say that they it's okay for them to kill transgender women, right? And so we have got to figure out a way that we're, uh, one, we like ally our trans women, that we stand behind them. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not just trans women, it's also trans men have, have a, a different level of discrimination, but they also have male privilege. One could argue that, that's arguably. But we have got to figure out a way that we end the violence against transgender women. It has to be something that's different. I definitely agree. Um, I think that not just, you know, uh, separating, I just want to say in addition to within the LGBT community, you know, I have a personal, personal issue with people being okay with being a victim. You know, it makes our job harder because it takes something as simple as you coming in and saying that's who did it. Something as simple as that. You know, and I, I'll go with you. I'll pick you up. You know, it's just you have to let your voice be heard. You cannot be victimized and turn a blind eye and then rag on the police for not doing nothing. You know, I will say this. The suspect that was arrested for the murder in Palmer Park is also the shooter for the uh, two transgender women that were shot on Woodward. But he's only being charged with the murder because my ladies won't come forward. I need my victims to come forward. You know, I've, I've put my number out here, you know, my email. And you know you're 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 in a safe space when you're with me, and I will take care of you and make sure that you're treated fairly, and that your rights aren't violated or anything of that sort. Because it's not about what you were doing; it's about you being a victim. Let's talk about safe spaces. What are the safe spaces? And in the black community, um, I think the safest space that anybody should be able to have is our African American churches. It's not safe. <laughs> it's not they're not for trans spiritually safe for trans women. And sometimes well, physically. Sometimes physically. Yes. Even emotionally even too. Even even emotionally. Um <clears throat> there have been very few churches that I have been to where I have been I fully felt like I belong. I'm a member of Breaking Chains Outreach Ministry. My pastor's name is Dr. Daniel Nichols. And um we I, that is a safe space for me and other people who um, who deal with a host of other issues. But other than that, spaces, it, it really bothers me because my transition was not just physical, it was spiritual. And I don't think people understand that, although you may not understand it because you can't put yourself in my shoes, I didn't just, um, I didn't just physically transition, that was emotional. I had to let some things go and learn and learn some new things and you know deal with deal with the with with the wants and, and and the needs of my heart and I think that people totally disregard that and they feel as though that when we transition we transition because God is not supposed to make mistakes and and that there signifies that there's something wrong with being transgender but if God knew me before I knew myself he he knew that I would go through this struggle cool. and 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 the God that I know has supplied me with plenty so that whole debate yes we can have it but I think that churches need to take responsibility and preaching the love of Christ and if we're sitting here pointing fingers and condemning people and disrespecting people how are you doing that how are you walking with them it's interesting uh, Cory Booker said you can preach to me all day and I'm, I'm paraphrasing very loosely you can preach to me all day about your love of God and the God you serve and what God don't like but if you are a true servant of God, show me your God in the way you treat people, mm -hmm. the way you respect people, the way you act towards people. And if we can, we, we can cre create that as a doctrine of I, me as a spirit led person, I have to put out what I want to receive. That's right. right. And so that's why I always try to put out love. I always try to put out good energy to folks. Because at the end of the day, when I, who am I to judge anybody? about anything. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can't judge you heterosexual folks, even though sometimes we would really, really like to. 
No, it's as simple as, um, you know, if you can't love me who you see in every day, mm -hmm. then how can you say you love God? Absolutely. And so I think these are the things that we have to challenge um, at our, our, our churches with, our, our clergy with, because, and especially in the African American community, because I think we're kind of behind our other um, brothers and sisters in Christ um, in, on these issues. Um, that, that, that God does not discriminate against anyone. Nope. You know, and so when you're, when you're in your, your, your different roles every day, this is why it's important to bring different facets of the community together yeah, definitely. to show that yes. we're all working together. Yes. Um, uh, um, uh, something that is, and I want to uh, direct this question to you, Okay, um, Officer Ben, is that the um, in the between the lines it says that um, uh, while attacks on the LGBT community along Woodward between McNichols and Seven Mile are nothing new, the public rarely gets to hear about. It. The police keep tight lipped about most attacks. Um, is that true, and why is it? Um, and and in that wrapping up the news that you shared earlier with us about the, the updated information on all of this uh, concerning these shootings. Okay, uh, one, it's not so much as we remain tight-lipped. You know, when doing an investigation, you cannot dispel every piece of information that you have because it's sensitive. You know, and we're trying to gather all the facts so we can close the case or bring this person to justice or whatever the case may be. We can't put everything out there. We got to keep it to ourselves amongst the investigators so that we can properly solve the case. Because as you see, even with the media, they'll put this out there, they'll put that out there, and that could make or break us. And sometimes the information is too sensitive to put out there. It's not that we don't want you to know. It's just you can't know right now. You know, be patient. You know, and then to speak up. It's so easy to point the finger at the police. You're not doing this. You're not doing that. But when you, as a citizen, you have a duty too. You know, and we rely on the community to help us. You know, yeah, we got this kind of equipment and these kind of skills, but it makes it so much easier if the victims come forward and say, that was him, that was her. Um, and also with that, the person that was murdered, well, I'll say the body that was found at Palmer Park because the murder didn't happen at Palmer Park and that victim was not transgender. Not at all. Like, I think one of you said, you know, it was just lumped together because of the area and how people stereotype, you know, the LGBT community. So once again, we have an issue. Yep. Um, that because of that area of town, it's almost like walking while black. Don't walk in that area <laughs> because, you know, you're going to be stereotyped and you're going to be, uh, you know, uh, stigmatized and it's just not right. And I think the media also needs to understand that by putting out false information, you also create panic. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the young trans women that um, frequent the area were now concerned that this was somebody just out here just killing people. And I think that reporters need to take responsibility in the fact that you understand that you are not giving out accurate information and you're jumping the gun. And like, it, w it was scary because I know me and John had a whole, a whole conversation about like trying to find people like, and for me being a leader in the community, that means now I have to reach out to all of these people and try to figure out what happened and who was it. And I think you got to conduct your own investigation. <laughs> it was interesting. Yeah. It really was to, to, to see, I'm going to connect two things, to see when, when, we, when we live in a space of being leader, 
right? We live in a space of folks knowing your name. And you pick up the phone and you say, hey, I just heard this happen. What is the T? Now, the T is not what I'm going to tell the police. The T is, look, I'm your homeboy. What happened? Right. Mm -hmm. Everybody doesn't so, know what it, it, right, everybody Well, so. T is the information. Oh, okay. okay. What's the information? What's the, what's what's the deets? What, what's the details? And so, what I kept getting was that this was the type of situation that nobody didn't want to say anything because mm -hmm. no one knew what the consequences were going to be. Right. Mm -hmm. The 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 young trans women, if they get involved in something, I don't want to tell the police because y'all don't know if they're going to arrest me for prostitution. Mm -hmm. and the well, it, that uh, she um. She was telling me about it, and she just was like, oh, yeah, I was shy yesterday. And I was like, wait, what happened? So when I was talking to her, and we processed the whole situation. And I was like, you know, I knew, I've heard of you, and I knew that you were the police liaison. So I was like, okay, well, I know I can get in contact, and we can try to get this situation resolved. And her, her thing was that she just was like, she didn't want to be, she didn't want to get in trouble because of just even being out there. And I think that that is a problem that is also perpetuated by media, that um, because you were in a space that where all of these things happen, that you are no longer a victim because you participated in an act that you feel like is a crime. Let me break you in right there. And that's the problem I keep running into. Mm -hmm. You know, you feel because, I mean, it's just like somebody can be in a dope house. And something happened to them. Yeah, you was in the dope house, but you're still a victim. Exactly. You're still a victim. You know, I have people that won't come into the station and make a report because they got a warrant. They're going to arrest me when I get there. You're a victim. You got to make a report, you know, or if all else fails, call Crime Stoppers, you know, or call it in over the phone. But say something. Don't allow yourself to be a victim because there is help out there. There are people out there that want to help you. And guess what? Even by doing that, you could probably be steered in another direction where you can get your stuff together. You never know. Mm -hmm. You know, but you have to speak up for yourself. You have to say something. So, is that because we're, we're at the end of our show just about. So, what I'm feeling here is, what is the safe space before, um, because of the issues in the places where we are and, and where we happen to be, that's authority. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that is mm -hmm. going to help me, but I mm -hmm. got this, that going on. So is there somewhere where people can reach out to, call, um, before they get to Officer Danny, and then you be sort of like a, a, a bridge between them and her and, you know, and, 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 and be able to talk? And I think so because the um, leaders and the organizations that... Uh, uh, um, that that are that are uh, uh, offering services to trans, trans transgender women and men. You know, um, I don't want to minimize your role, but there is a natural mistrust. Oh, definitely. You know? And then there's a and that's why, that's, judgment. That's why, that's why, yeah. That's why she's here to be that liaison because there were a lot of situations that happened before you were a liaison, liaison that made the community stand together and say, hey, you know, we need someone who's on the inside who can mm -hmm. speak for us and, and better guide us in the directions to seek justice. I mean, I've been discriminated against and I've had situations happen with me. So I already know. I've, I've been there. I've been on both sides. So I'm there. I hold your hand. I walk you there. I sit with you. You know, whatever you need to make you feel comfortable to get this job done. I think the, the best thing that you can continue to do, and you and, I, you and I have had this conversation before, the best thing that, that can be done for you is to always be present. Yep, be visible. And not that you can't be present everywhere all mm -hmm. the time, 24 7, mm -hmm. but by people hearing your voice on the radio. Exactly. And saying, oh, I'm here for you. Hey, it's going to take a couple of times for that to happen. Oh, yeah. But eventually, I think that our community will begin to, to understand. I mean, listen, if folks need, if folks have been victimized, they can call me, they can call Bree, they can call Kip, they can call the Dallas folks. We have put out mm -hmm. enough information where the folks can be, it, we almost have a six degree of separation kind of thing now. It doesn't mm -hmm. okay, 
right? Because if you if you don't know somebody, you know somebody who knows somebody who knows Right. Somebody. You know what? What's that what's that child name that worked for the police department? She wanted the girls, honey. I need her to, I need her to help me. Mm-hmm. Like it could be one of those that's ultimately what will happen, right? Mm-hmm. And so there's hope at the very least. Yes, and there's there, hope. And, and there are community spaces where our transgender people. Mm-hmm. That's where Dallas Yes. Uh, affirmations. Affirmations. Yes, and we also have to understand that trans resources are limited Very. only because um, people are uh, not, there are systems set up that don't respect gender identity and what that looks like. So a lot of these spaces are, although they are trans friendly, we don't have a trans specific organization. Um, the services that are provided um, are HIV, um, whether it be testing or care that's immediate and there are some programs that provide hormones but as far as like housing and those other things that keep trans women off of the streets those aren't available well I think maybe it's high time that stay tuned stay tuned stay tuned yeah I got some stay tuned too stay tuned yeah that's another show that's another show stay tuned we're going to we're going to have some follow up shows Uh, I, I commit to that um, because I think that this conversation needs to continue to happen. And I want to thank you all for coming this evening. Thank you for having us. LGBTQ liaison officer Danny Woods. You can find her in her office at 313-596-2520. That's 313-596-2520. Or on my cell that I can't turn off, and you can leave a message, and I check them because I have to, 313-400-4450. Okay, and our community activist, Bree Campbell, yes, yes, yes. you can reach her at um, Facebook, Instagram, uh, you can go to Bree uh, Campbell, that's with an accent and E. Um, I can also be reached at the Horizons Project, uh, area code 313-924-8228. If I'm not in my office, leave me a message. And John Trump would... John. But I could be... DayAnthonyTrimble at gmail.com or my cell phone, 313-808-217. Available if you need me, how? And always... Yes. Reverend Franklin, and spiritually speaking, I thank you for sharing with us this evening. Um, you can always reach me at um, uh, my email, I'm all over the place, or my cell phone number, which is 313. That's not true. It's 248 <laughs> And I'd like to thank you again for tuning in with us and my wonderful guests, spiritually speaking. See you next Tuesday.